Are there any ways to get lower down payment percentages as an investor in the state of Ohio? So I guess let's talk about all of down payments real quick. If you are an owner occupant, then generally you can get into a property for 5% down, maybe less if it's your first time, if you're a first time home buyer, or if you have some sort of like grant or governmental program helping you out. If you're interested in doing that thing called house hacking or buying like a multifamily property, because if you purchase four units or less, then it qualifies for the same loan, uh, the same residential loan. So in theory, you can live in one of the units of that four unit. You can put 5% down or maybe less and buy that four unit. You could rent out the other three units, maybe even the other rooms inside the unit that you're going to own or occupy. That would probably be the easiest way to get your first property without putting much down at all. Other than that, traditionally, if it is an investment property, then most banks will want you to put 25% down. Now, 25% down is a kind of a good rule of thumb. However, if you're not opposed to paying PMI, private mortgage insurance, then there are some local credit unions here in Ohio that will only require that you put about 15% down on an investment property. However, you would have like a monthly PMI payment that really, you know, does you no good. I think it's like 50 $50, maybe more. I think the PMI, the amount that you pay on a monthly basis has everything to do with the value of the home. If you just do a traditional loan, then you're looking at putting 15 to 25% down. The last way to kind of put no money down, which is what my brother and I do, and that is that you use private lenders or your own cash to purchase and acquire a property. I mean, excuse me, acquire and renovate. So purchase and rehab a property. Now, if you do that, then you're using your own capital or the money of a private lender who, and private lenders do not have the same stipulations as the lenders do, right? So while private lenders act as banks, they are not banks. Private lenders can be friends. Private lenders can be uh, family members. Private lenders can be, you know, institutions. And when you're operating in this space, the terms are whatever the two parties kind of mutually agree on. What we regularly do is we use private lender money to acquire and renovate a property. Now, as we are purchasing these properties, we are paying very close attention to make sure that our purchase price plus the renovation costs are not greater than 75% of the loan value. Because banks generally want you to put down 25% down and they want to give you 75% loan to value on the property, that is why we are saying we want the purchase price plus the renovation costs to be less than 75%. So if we purchase the property, renovate the property, and then get that property rented out for less than 75% of the after repair value, now once that property is seasoned, which every bank has different seasoning requirements, you can take that recently renovated property to the lender and you could do a cash out refinance or just like a rate and term refinance. I want to stress that every bank has their own individual rules and preferences of doing this. So if you get rejected by one lender or if one lender turns you down, you should look at all of the other ones. Don't take your first response, especially if it's negative. Uh, at heart. That's not how all banks operate. That's just how this bank operates. In a perfect world, all the deals that we do, the money received from the lender at 75% loan to value will pay off that private lender. And then hopefully there's a little bit left over. Hopefully we ended up less than that 75% and we're able to pull some cash out of the property. That is our goal. And if you do it that way, then you never have to put any money down because you've borrowed 100% of the purchase price and 100% of the rehab costs. And if you can get pretty good at doing that, then you will never have to leave money in a property. And if you never have to leave money in a property, then there's no limit on how quickly you can scale other than just like the natural bandwidths and bottlenecks of running a business, which are plenty. And I think one of the most important things that you can do as a real estate investor, as a business owner, are constantly searching and assessing for potential bottlenecks, any sort of bandwidth issues you're having or anything like that. Thanks for watching that clip. I thought that was a good question. And I think you can ask good questions too. Join us every Friday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for a live stream Q&A 
where we answer plenty of questions just like this one. In the meantime, consider subscribing to the channel if you want more of this content. And if you want to increase your deal flow, analyze properties better, and help me feed my family, click the link below for a free seven-day trial of PropStream.